investigate and learn about I, uh, exceptions in uh, Python. So let's go ahead and start a new project. So we have a new project. We're going to go ahead and, uh, and start a new Python file. So in this case, I'm going to call it exception one. So this would be my exception one dot py file. And in here, I am going to test out what issues would happen if, for example, I have a data validation error. For example, let's suppose I wanted to input some sort of a number and uh, then I entered anything but a number. What would happen while the program is running? So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say we have num equals int input enter a number. Right? So, uh, so when you run this, it basically says enter a number. Typically, you will enter a number. You're good to go. And typically, it should be an integer value. Now, should I enter a float, what would happen? 2.3. Then I get an error because it doesn't match the integer that I have here. Now, I need you to pay attention to the bottom here when the error comes up. And it says it's a value error. Okay, keep that in mind. We're going to be using that to control how this program will behave in case it encounters a problem of this nature and how not to crash. That's the idea of exceptions, is to make sure that we can handle or catch an error and handle it. Okay, so um, how can we handle it right now uh, generically, no matter what the error is? Well, you need to put this in a try block. So this instruction here needs to be in a try block. Notice now the red squiggly line means this is not complete. Now the handling part gets done here, except, and then you could do something here that says maybe print uh, wrong data type. Okay. So, but notice here, I have an except with a yellow squiggly line, which means, yes, it will work, but it's incomplete. It's not very specific as to what kind of errors. So let's go ahead and run this. And yeah, so if I do a one, no problem. So I don't get the wrong data type. So think of this as an if then else statement, right? So uh, the except is the else part. So now let's go ahead and do this and do a 2.3. And notice that my program did not crash. What I ended up with is the message under the except. Now to be more specific, remember when we had that error and uh, let's say we, let's go ahead and do this and get that error to come back. And here's what I'm going to do. So, and I'm going to go ahead and try to comment out everything we've done just get back that error and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put 2.3 here or even high there and you can see I get that value error so anything you've entered here that is not an integer you're going to get this kind of error so let me copy this now and come back here and redo this in a way where I am very specific as to what type of error that is so notice now I need to tab this. This is under that block. I'm going to get the except here and I'm going to take that hashtag here. But now I'm going to put value error here. Now, as soon as I did that, notice the yellow squiggly line over there disappeared. Okay, so this is very specific as to what kind of error that is. So the behavior is going to be the same, either you have it or don't. And that's because I only have one type of error at this stage. So let's go ahead and run it. And let's say 2.3 and you get wrong data type. Okay. But this is very specific here that it is a value error type. Now let's say I, I ask for a second number, num2 equals int enter another number. Okay. And uh, oh, that should be under an input function, okay? And let's put another to balance it out. And let's suppose now we want to divide these two numbers. 
Let's say result equals num divided by num2, right? And then we want to see what happens if num2, for example, is 0, which means it's a division by 0. So with value error, will it detect the fact that we will have a division by 0? Let's go ahead and check it out. So first number is a 2. Now, let's say the next number is a 3. Then obviously I'm not printing the result, but notice I got no, uh, no messages that says wrong data type or no error messages, right? So good. Uh, let's go ahead and do another one. 2. This time let's divide by 0. And notice my program crashes. That's because the exception for value error does not detect does not detect the division by zero. It only detects the fact that you might not have entered a proper data or a number that is of that proper data type as an integer. So how can we handle it? Well, you could do this, for example. You could remove that mess, that specificity and just put here error, you know, just generically. So this way, if you do put it 2.3, for example, you're going to get an error. If you do divide by 0, let's say 2 divided by 0, you still will get an error. So this will be a catch-all. But we want this one to be specific to error value. So we could say here, wrong data type entered. But now we can zero in. Now remember, let me go ahead and divide by zero again. We're going to capture, we're going to capture the error message that happens when we have a division by zero. And notice right here, it's right here. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to add that to an extra exception that handles that particular problem. And there you have it. So now let's go ahead and print this division by zero is not allowed. Okay, so let's see now here, uh, obviously I gotta spend, uh, spell division better, what happens here, right? So, uh, so I have two exceptions here, one that detects the data type that I enter and one detects if I have a division by zero. All right, well, let's check it out. So if I do a 2.3, it goes straight to wrong data type and gets you out, right? So let's go ahead and divide by zero. Let's enter proper data, two, and divide by four, or zero, I'm sorry, and division by zero is not allowed. So it focuses specifically on the issue at hand, okay? All right, so I hope this will help you figure out exactly how to filter an error.